consisting of policy actions towards positioning the Reserve Bank as a model central bank of the global south. The agenda for the run-up to RBI at 100 is documented in the annex to this statement. I urge all keen observers of the Indian economy and the financial system to take a close look at these action plans. This is not a static document. It cannot be a static document as we are living in a dynamic world. Our endeavor will be to continually update it as may be required from time to time. I would now turn to the decisions and deliberations of the Monetary Policy Committee. The Monetary Policy Committee met on 5th, 6th and 7th June. After detailed assessment of the evolving macroeconomic and financial developments and the outlook, the MPC decided by a 4 is to 2 majority to keep the policy repo rate unchanged at 6.5%. Consequently, the standing deposit facility, that is SDF, rate remains at 6.25% and the marginal standing facility, that is MSF rate, and the bank rate at 6.75%. The NPC also decided by a majority of 4 out of 6 members to remain focused on withdrawal of accommodation to ensure that inflation progressively aligns to the target while supporting growth. I shall now briefly set out the rationale for these decisions. The inflation growth balance is moving favorably. Growth is holding firm. Inflation continues to moderate, mainly driven by the core component, which reached its lowest level in the current series in April 2024. The deflation in fuel prices is ongoing. Food inflation, however, remains elevated. While the MPC took note of the disinflation achieved so far without hurting growth, it remains vigilant to any upside risks to inflation, particularly from food inflation, which could possibly derail the path of disinflation. Hence, monetary policy must continue to remain disinflationary and be resolute in its commitment to aligning inflation to the target of 4% on a durable basis. Sustained price stability would set strong foundations for a period of high growth. Accordingly, the MPC decided to keep the policy repo rate unchanged at 6.5% in this meeting of the MPC. The MPC also decided to remain focused on withdrawal of accommodation to ensure anchoring of inflation expectations and fuller policy transmission. I would now like to provide an assessment of uh, the growth and uh, inflation conditions. Uh, let me first briefly touch upon global growth. Global growth is sustaining its momentum in 2024 and is likely to remain resilient supported by rebound in global trade. Inflation is easing, but the final leg of this disinflation journey may be tough. Central banks remain steadfast and data dependent in their fight against inflation. Market expectations regarding timing and pace of interest rate cuts are also changing with incoming data and central bank communication. U.S. dollar and sovereign bond yields remain range-bound. While gold prices have surged on safe haven demand, equity markets have gained in both advanced and emerging market economies since the last MPC meeting in April. Uh, let me focus now on the domestic growth conditions. The provisional estimates released by the National Statistics Office, National Statistical Office, NSO, placed India's real gross domestic product, that is GDP growth, at 8.2% for the year 23-24. During 24-25, that is during the current year so far, domestic economic activity has maintained resilience. Manufacturing activity continues to gain ground on the back of strengthening domestic demand. The eight core industries posted healthy growth in April 2024. Purchasing Managers Index, that is PMI in manufacturing,
continued to exhibit strength in May 2024, and it is indeed the highest globally. Services sector maintained buoyancy as evident from available high-frequency indicators. PMI services stood strong at 60.2 in May 2024, indicating continued and robust expansion in activity. Private consumption, the mainstay of aggregate demand, is recovering. <coughs> and it is recovering with steady discretionary spending in urban areas. Revival in rural demand is getting a fillip from improving farm sector activity. Investment activity continues to gain traction on the back of ongoing expansion in non-food bank credit. Merchandise exports expanded in April with improved global demand. Non-oil, non-gold imports entered positive territory. Services exports and imports rebounded and posted a strong growth in April this year. Looking ahead, the forecast of above-normal southwest monsoon by the Indian Meteorological Department, that is IMD, is expected to boost Kharif production and replenish the reservoir levels. Strengthening agricultural sector activity is expected to boost rural consumption. On the other hand, sustained buoyancy in services activity should continue to support urban consumption. The healthy balance sheets of banks and corporates, governments continued thrust on capex, high capacity utilization, and business optimism augur well for investment activity. External demand should get a fillip from improving prospects of global trade. Taking all these factors in, into consideration, real GDP growth for the current financial year 2024-25 is projected at 7.2%. Let me repeat, the GDP growth that we are now projecting for the current financial year 2024-25 is 7.2% q1 at 7.3% q2 at 7.2% q3 at 7.3% and q4 at 7.2% the risks are evenly balanced i would now like to focus on inflation cpi headline inflation softened further during the months of march and april though persisting food inflation pressures offset the gains of disinflation in core and deflation in fuel groups. Despite some moderation, pulses and vegetables inflation remained firmly in double digits. Vegetable prices are experiencing a summer uptick following a, following a, a shallow winter season correction. The deflationary trend in fuel was driven primarily by the LPG price cuts in early March. Core inflation softened for the 11th consecutive month since June 2023. Services inflation moderated to a historic low and uh, goods inflation remained contained. The exceptionally hot summer season and the low reservoir levels may put stress on the summer crop of vegetables and fruits. The rubby arrivals of pulses and vegetables need to be carefully monitored. Global food prices have also started inching up. Prices of industrial metals have registered double-digit growth in the current calendar year so far. These trends, if sustained, could accentuate the recent uptick in input cost conditions for farms. On the other hand, the forecast of above-normal monsoon bodes well for the Kharif season. Wheat procurement has surpassed last year's level. In fact, the buffer stocks of wheat and rice are well above the norms. These developments could bring respite to food inflation pressures, particularly in cereals and pulses. The outlook on crude oil prices remains uncertain due to geopolitical tensions. Assuming a normal monsoon, CPI inflation for 2024-25 is projected at 4.5% with Q1 at 4.9%, Q2 at 3.8%, Q3 at 4.6%, and Q4 at 4.5%. The risks are evenly balanced. 
So thus, as you can see, the GDP growth projection, we have increased it from 7%, which we gave out in the last MPC meeting. We have increased it to 7.2%. And the inflation projection, the average for the year, uh, we have retained it at 4.5% uh, as, as it was in the last MPC meeting. And uh, I have explained there are good reasons why we have increased the GDP uh, forecast, the GDP projection for the current year. Now, what do these inflation and growth conditions mean for monetary policy? That is the question, and I would like to answer that. The developments relating to growth and inflation are unfolding as per our expectations. When the, when, <clears throat> when the projected GDP growth of 7.2% for 2024-25 materializes, it will be the fourth consecutive year of growth at or above 7%. Headline CPI continues to be on a disinflationary trajectory. Monetary policy has played an important role in this process. This is evident from the decline in headline inflation by 2.3 percentage points between the first quarter of 22-23 and the fourth quarter of 23-24. Supply-side developments and government measures have also contributed to this moderation of headline inflation. Repeated food price shocks, however, slowed down the overall disinflation process. According to our projections, the second quarter of 2024-25 is likely to see some correction in headline inflation. But this is likely to be one off on account of favorable base effects and may reverse in the third quarter. If you look at the projections we have given, uh, then it becomes very clear that in the second quarter, the headline inflation is likely to come down to about 3.8 percent, and thereafter again it goes up. Uh, and we have given the numbers in the statement, and I have already read it out earlier. Uh, uh, at the current juncture, therefore, the uncertainties related to food price outlook warrant close monitoring, especially their spillover risks to headline inflation. In parallel, the behavior of the core component... All right, so that was the highly awaited briefing of the RBI governor on monetary policy. Let's just quickly go through a few of the key takeaways. One, of course, is that the repo rate remains unchanged at 6.5%. This actually means that there's going to be no immediate effect on real estate or home loan EMI. So those who have them, you're not going to be likely witnessing any change when it comes to your EMI payments as well. Uh, beyond this, also important is the GDP growth, which was projected for 2024-2025. That has gone up from 7% to 7.2%. Also important here is what does this mean for the monetary policy? Uh, one statement that was made by the RBI governor is that when the projected GDP growth for the current year is realized, this will mean that it is the fourth consecutive year of growth above 7%. Now, we'll continue to track the impact of these statements. Right now, we're heading into a very short break. Do stay tuned. We'll be right back with more.